Hi everyone and welcome to day four of Anxious to Aligned workshops. Today is our full moon ceremony, so welcome along. We're going to tell you a couple of facts about the moon and then we're going to move into ceremony. But for, for the ceremony, there's a couple of bits that we want, so just make sure you've got some paper or a notebook or a journal and a pen handy. And it can be really nice just to set up the space as well. So you want a quiet space, you want to be here for about 20 minutes, half an hour. I've got some candles and crystals with me and it can be nice to have a warm drink or a glass of water as well. So let's just start telling you a little bit about the moon. I'm sure we're all aware of its um, changing features. So the moon travels around the earth and it takes about 28 days to go through a whole lunar cycle. And through a 12 month cycle or an annual cycle, it will move through the 12 signs of the zodiac as well. And the moon's position in relation to the sun will reveal which stage of the cycle that we're in. So if I'm gonna show you this here. So we're in a full moon phase at the moment. And that means that the moon sits opposite the sun and it has the moon, sun's rays reflecting on it. So it looks full and bright in the sky. And then it moves round all of these stages eventually into a new moon phase. And that basically means when the moon sits in front of the sun, so the moon's still there up in the sky, it's just got no light shining on it so you can't see it. And then we're working through these eight phases and each cycle takes about three days or about three and a half days within each phase. So starting here on the new moon and then we're moving up, round and down. So we've got the new moon, the crescent moon, the first quarter, the gibbous moon, the full moon, the disseminating, the third quarter, and the balsamic moon. So it's nice to know about this, but it's more important to know why use these moon cycles and how does that make a difference in your life. So me and my sister who's here, Hannah, we've been connecting for about three years on the stages of the new and the full moon, and we work through certain practices. So obviously it keeps you in touch with nature when you look up at that full moon. You can kind of feel the bigger picture and feel connected to the universe. And the moon is really supportive of feminine energy. So the sun represents masculine energy, this yang, fiery, energetic, active, doing side. But the moon is the equal opposite and it represents this coming in within, this slowing down and this receptive energy. Hannah and I work with two main stages of the moon phase. So you can work with all eight phases, but we commit to the new and the full moon. So on a new moon, we do intention setting. And on a full moon, then we do a releasing ceremony. So it helps, holds us accountable. And it's like a natural calendar, like a cosmic calendar, keeping you committed to living a conscious life that you're creating. And there's a couple of really lovely important practices to do on the face of the new moon uh, sorry the face of the full moon and Hannah's going to tell us a little bit more about that now yeah so I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk to you about um, our hormones so both men and women and how they're actually affecting us on a full moon and the kind of things that we need to be aware of within our relationships and whether we should be spending time together or apart so um, the moon has a big effect on the tides and you probably know this it has that pull and push effect on the tides. And so because we're made up of about 70% water, um, the moon actually affects us too. So it has that pull and push effect on our bodily fluids and on our cells. And depending on how hydrated you are and how balanced your electrolytes are, the full moon might feel quite um, aggravating for you. And it's aggravating for your nervous system and your cellular tissue. And over this week, we've been talking about the nervous system and how it's related to anxiety. So it's very, um, relevant to what we're talking about with the full moon here. So if your body's lacking in water and it's got any deficiencies in any of the electrolytes like potassium or magnesium, then you are going to feel stressed at times like the full moon and the lunar eclipses. So I've had lots of examples of this in my own body. So before I came aware of really the cycles of the moon, obviously I've always known they've been there, but I haven't connected to it. So I'd have, you know, times of the month that was more difficult in my body than other times. But once I started uh, tuning into the full moons, well, 
the, the moon cycles in general, I started to notice that I was always in pain on a full moon. So I remember one time when I went away with my husband um, for a night away and I was fine that night, but the next day was a full moon. And when I woke up, I had uh, like an agonizing pain in my shoulder. And then I started to notice a pattern that every single full moon, it would be my back was really hurting or something was wrong with my knee and it would literally feel like it would come overnight. And it wasn't until I got more hydrated, got more of that balance of the, the electrolytes, and just started to become more um, nutritionally, nutritionally balanced that I started to feel better throughout the different cycles of the moon. So if you have got any imbalances, you're going to notice, uh, notice this particularly on a mental level um, on a full moon. And this is where the word lunatic comes from. So it was believed that the moon caused intermittent insanity. So um, you may not feel, feel it quite as strongly as insanity, but you might notice that your emotions are a bit more up and down or your kids are a little bit crazy around the full moon. I definitely noticed that. And as we um, approach the full moon, let's just talk about men for a moment. Their testosterone levels start to increase. So this can mean that they start start to um, you know, behave a little bit out of character, maybe they're lethargic, particularly if they're nutritionally deficient themselves, then what that can do is that you kind of like butt up against each other as couples and you're going to feel that hostility and it can lead to arguments and stress. So I've definitely noticed that my husband's kind of annoying around a full moon and I'm actually quite pleased for him to spend some time by himself and me to go and do a thing with the girls. So it's been really good to... Um, be doing as Sarah said these full moon ceremonies every single full moon ceremonies every single month so it's really good for men to spend a little bit of time by themselves to slow down they find that life will be flowing more easily you're giving them a little bit of freedom a little bit of space and actually this helps to balance their hormones and um, moving on to women now, women actually have a greater need for bonding than men because we release much more oxytocin. So oxytocin is our bonding hormone, a, a neurotransmitter, and this is actually produced when we cuddle. So that might be cuddling another person or even, you know, your pet. And that's why, you know, young girls might take a teddy to bed with them for many years. Or I've noticed that women tend to want pets more than men. So it's normally the woman trying to give the man we should get a dog or we need more cats. And us women, we tend to be more um, emotionally sensitive. And this oxytocin is actually released in the pituitary gland. But the main site for the oxytocin receptors is in the cup. So that's why women tend to be more intuitive, more lead with their gut instinct. And we crave more of this bonding, more of this connection. So um, oxytocin also reduces cortisol, which is amazing. And it's great for like-minded women to spend time together on every full moon and spend that away from men. So just um, some other chemicals I want to talk about, which are serotonin and dopamine. These are the main happy um, chemicals and on average women actually produce about 50% less serotonin than men so that's why we're more likely to suffer from depression um, but this serotonin is actually restored by talking so I don't know about you but I certainly find you know if I'm having a bit of a down day jump on the phone with a girlfriend or a zoom call or come into moon circle really really helps and women do need to chat more we feel that this solves problems whereas men you'll know this but they tend to cave in more when they feel that they've got problem so this is a, a time these are the, all the reasons why it's so important for us women to be spending time together on a full moon thanks hannah that was so useful it's really interesting to hear about the differences between men and women and how to honor them in a lovely way mm. um, so there's a couple of small other rituals that you can do on the full moon so if you have crystals if you wear crystals or have them in your home it's really nice to place them outside, maybe on the soil, or I place mine in um, a plant pot and just allow the um, moon to shine down on them on the night of the full moon and re-energize, absorb that energy. It sort of cleanses them and recharges them. It's also lovely to um, literally go moon bathing, so go for a walk outside in nature and glance up at the full moon. And it's a really nice time to actually bathe your body as well, so maybe having a bath with essential oils and magnesium because as Hannah mentioned, we are also influenced um, in our bodily functions by the moon. We wanna keep our electrolytes balanced. So magnesium's a, a really important mineral. So maybe having an Epsom salt bath, a magnesium bath. And I really like to have a nice warm cup of raw cacao or mm -hmm. cacao powder. And it's really nutritious, it's got lots of magnesium and it really helps me to get into meditation as well. So hopefully you'll enjoy your little ceremony, which we're going to go into now. So just coming into a nice, comfortable seated 
posture. And if it feels comfortable for you, closing off the eyes or just softening the gaze, looking down at the floor. Just check that your heart is stacked over your hips and that your head's stacked over your heart with some nice length in the spine here. And let's come into our breath. So placing one hand on the heart space around the heart, one hand on the abdominals around the belly, and just send the breath here and feel the breath connecting with the breath. And then in your mind's eye, just picture a full bright moon overhead. And you're looking up at that full moon. And you just notice that feeling of reassurance and, and of comfort. And knowing that this source of divine feminine energy is here to support you. Imagine her bright, gentle rays traveling through the night sky, shining upon you and replenishing you with her energy. Inhale deeply. And as you inhale, take in the calm and nurturing energy, feel it filling up your lungs and radiating throughout your body. Picture it reaching every cell and creating an inner strength. And know with every breath that you take, you are creating this lovely inner strength. So staying here for a couple of breaths. And if it feels comfortable, leaving the hands here. And if not, placing them just gently in the lap or resting on the knees with the palms facing up. And the next stage of the ceremony is to let go and clear out mentally. So just as you would clean your home or you would clean your body on a regular basis, we need to clear out this mental clutter and the full moon is an ideal time to do this. So what used to happen to me is I used to have these outbursts and let everything out and it would come and creep up on me unexpectedly um, at inconvenience times. And yes, I feel better after releasing, but it's nice to consciously release and um, do this on a regular basis and you'll really feel much calmer um, inside your mind. So now, if you worked with the workbook at the beginning, we asked you a couple of questions. So we're gonna cast them behind back to that, but if you didn't work with our printable workbook, it doesn't matter, we're just gonna connect now. So, Feeling into your breath, let's just connect with any feelings, emotions or words that come up relating to any mental conditions that you have, like anxiety, stress, depression, panic, ang anxiousness, anxiety. Just feeling what words come up, which emotions connect with you. Now, it can be hard sometimes to let that to the forefront, but we are going to release this out. So just bring them up and feel them in the body just briefly. Breathe into it. And then we're going to take our notebook, our journal, our piece of paper, and we're going to write down either one word or if you've got more words, we're going to write down the most prominent feeling or emotion or as many as you want down onto that paper. So go ahead and do that now. Just know that we're going to be releasing this so it can be hard to see it in front of you but we're going to let go of this and move on so writing down that one word or a few words there rip the page out if you're working with a notebook and now what, I, what we'd normally do on our full moon ceremony is we'd have a candle or a fire pit and we would literally hold that paper above the fire and let it burn so completely releasing and transmuting that energy. But I'm not gonna do that on camera today. What we are gonna do is also very powerful. We're gonna take that piece of paper and with our intention, we're gonna rip that up and just let go of that. Let's do it together. It really makes a difference when we do things collectively. So tearing it up into as many pieces as you want. Now you can place that to one side and if you feel better, you can burn that off after this video or you can just chuck it away. I just really feel that release as you let go. I mean, for me, it definitely feels like I'm creating more space there. Take a big sigh out if it's there. Maybe you feel that tension leaving your body. Maybe your shoulders are a little bit more relaxed and just enjoying that feeling for a moment. Then we're gonna move on to the next stage of the ceremony, which is forgiveness. So Hannah, 
through a beginner's formula. So coming back into that meditation state, closing off the eyes, growing tall in the spine, and Hannah's going to take us through now. Yeah, I'd love to do. So forgiveness doesn't mean what happened was right or acceptable. It just means that you no longer um, choose to let it cause you pain or upset. So it's been said that anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to come to harm. Or I've heard it said anger is like carrying a hot coal. What it actually does is it burns you and it doesn't actually affect the other person at all. So let's clear some mental space to make way for better things now. So like Sarah said, I invite you to close the eyes if that feels comfortable for you. Take some nice deep breaths. I'd love to do that in through the nose and out through the nose. And on the exhale, release any stress, any worries, any concerns. Feel them escaping from your body and being propelled out of you. And now I want you to think about that person, that um, conversation, that event, or that idea, whatever it is that upset you. And the one that you want to let go of. And if you need to, you can go all the way back to childhood. It may not be something recent, maybe something from many years ago that you haven't quite let go of. And you can choose as many as you want to. Remember to include yourself in the forgiveness exercise. So I want you to take the time now to visualise uh, what came to you when I asked you what you want to let go of. And I want you to see each person, if there's per a person there in that scenario, or the event or the wrongdoing, see it in detail now in your mind's eye. So just paint that picture. And then once you've got that there and that feels very clear, I'd love you to cover that situation in a pink bubble in your mind's eye. So pink is like representing the color of love, kindness, compassion. If it's not pink that works for you, choose a color that works for you. And I want you to um, create a good feeling between the two of you. Or if it's not a person between you and that situation. And now come and place a hand on your heart. Hold that feeling in your heart now. And say out loud or silently, I forgive you. And see that pink cloud slowly and happily just begin to float away. Okay, so I'm going to recite a formula now. And you might like to follow each sentence just in your mind after me. So under this glorious full moon, I forgive everything. Everyone, every experience every memory of the past or present that needs forgiveness. I forgive positively everyone. I also forgive myself of past mistakes. The universe is love and I'm forgiven and governed by love alone. Love is now adjusting my life. Realize this, I abide in peace. I bring love, I bring healing to all my faults, my beliefs, my relationships. I learn my lessons and I move on. I call my soul's fragments to be cleansed by the full moon and I call on them to rejoin me. I send love to myself and everyone I know and everyone who knows me in all directions of time, under this glorious full moon, I am healed. My life is healed. And so it is. So be it. Well done, everyone. It can be really hard to go through that sometimes. Um... Also, don't be afraid to reconnect with that um, practice on another full moon if you realise that you haven't fully let go of it yet. Sometimes it takes a couple of cycles. Um, but well done. Congratulations on releasing. And now with that, we've cleared this space out. Let's fill it with some really, really positive energy. So we're going to work with a gratitude practice now. 
And there is a lot of science and research that goes behind gratitude practice, how it can really lift you into a positive mindset and it actually helps to lift up and increase dopamine levels as well. So coming back to your, your paper, your journal, your notebook, and I want you just to write down five things that you're most grateful for at the moment. So maybe take your hand on your heart, just connect with it for a moment, and it could be absolutely anything. There's no right and wrong here. It might be that you're grateful for your food. It might be that you're grateful for the bed that you're sleeping. It could be a person, it could be a material possession. There's no right and wrong. But just bring it to the front of your heart and then write that down on paper. So there's something really powerful that happens when we take something out of the mind and onto paper. So you're just going to write those things down now. And we're just going to look to close the circle. So that's the process we've gone through. So we do our releasing. We burn or rip up what we want to let go of. We then release. And then we fill that space with gratitude. Then the next step of this journey would be on the new moon, which is on Friday, the 22nd of May. And we will be setting intentions for our goals and our dreams. So we are opening up our circle, which we'll be telling you more about in um, shortly. And we'd just like to thank you for joining us. Hannah, do you want to tell them about tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow we are running our visualization workshop. So if you're going to be joining us live or watching that on replay, we would love for you to tune in. Uh, we're going to be talking about how visualization can actually ease anxiety. So a, a situation that you're actually worried about, how you can use it for that. And then once you've actually started to let go of some of those anxieties, using some of these tools that we've been um, sharing with you this week, then we want to show you how you can use visualization to actually go for what you really want and start inviting more of that into your life so like Sarah said thank you so much for joining us on today's full moon we would love to hear um, how this was for you is this something you would like to do more often do you think it would be beneficial for you this is even something that you could do yourself at home and you could invite your family to join you I know that last night I did a little ceremony around a fire with my family and it's really powerful to teach your children how to let go of um, what they need to as well so we will see you tomorrow thank you so much for joining us today bye everyone Bye.